Hey guys, Zal here. Today I want to talk a bit about undergraduate research, why you're going to want to get into undergraduate research, and kind of a guide to how to get into undergraduate research. First things first, I know a lot of you know how important research is, especially in the STEM field. Getting into research as an undergrad can open so many doors for you on grad school applications, moving into other jobs, and just open all these little pathways for you to take as you get out of college. That's why it's really important to get into research research as an undergrad and so I want to give you some insight on how to get into a research lab as an undergrad and what to look for and just kind of guide you along the path so you can get into undergraduate research as soon as possible. So if you don't know, undergraduate research is one of the most important parts of a grad school application or even some job applications as you move outside of college. In a lot of cases, it can actually trump a bad GPA as long as your GPA still makes a cutoff for applying to that institution. The reason undergraduate research is so important is it's going to be what you're going to be doing as a career on a day-to-day -day basis. That's also why I recommend getting into it as soon as possible because you're going to get a taste of what the actual field is like and not just what the classes are like. You're going to want to figure out if you actually like the pathway that major is taking as soon as possible, be it in any of the STEM fields from biology to physics to chemistry. That's why it's really important to get into undergrad research as soon as you can so you can figure out if you actually like the stuff you're going to be doing as a career. Grad schools and jobs are more interested in how you research than how you really perform in your classes because research is going to be what you're going to be doing on the job. It's what you're going to be making your professional career out of so it's really important that you're good at it. Now of course that doesn't mean just like fail all your classes because the information you get in there is still important for applying to research, but it's more just to let you know that research is really important and even if you're just average in some classes, you could be an excellent researcher and that could really help your applications. The longer you can get into a research project is also really important because if an application says that you've been in the same research lab for like three out of four years of your college career, that really shows dedication and it's more likely that you'll be able to maybe publish a research paper as an undergrad, which is a crazy boost to any application. Now with that let's hop into how to actually get into undergraduate research. Now there are two different types of undergraduate research. There's student-run independent research which a lot of people will do in conjunction with the second type which is research under a professor in an actual research lab. This second research can be a lot more serious. You're gonna be working with PhD students and professors on their actual personal projects, and this is a really good way to get into a certain field. So first things first, I want you to go on the website where they have research that's done by professors listed and read through all these professors' pages. There's so much research that can be done and you wanna find one that actually interests you. If something in your department isn't super interesting, you can find tangential research in other departments that you can actually go into. A lot of people think they have to do research in their major when it's actually possible to do research in different labs that are outside of your major. Like it wouldn't be that surprising if in a biochem lab you have a chemistry major or in an engineering lab you have a physics major, all sorts of things. I personally am not even in a chemistry lab as a chemistry major. I'm working with the material science department so that's just proof that you can pick a lab that interests you more so than as part of your major. Once you've read through all these professors pages and you find the pages that interest you and be sure you find the pages that actually interest you because you're going to be working in this lab for potentially years and you don't want to be working in a lab that you're going to be totally miserable in for all those years. So now that you have the labs that you're actually interested, it's time to email those professors. Now I'm going to heed a warning to not go and use a copy and paste email for each professor. There's a small enough number of labs that it's really not as much work to go and write an individual email to each professor where you can go through and you're going to want to lay this out where you introduce yourself, you talk about your major, what you're interested in, and any other basic information that you would do. And then you kind of want a paragraph of why you're specifically interested in their lab and want to get into that research. This paragraph is really important because professors are a lot less likely to bring in someone who's just looking to get a research 
point to like pad their resume than someone who's legitimately interested in that field. And also after this, that's where the point where if you're interested in something like a grad school, PhD program, master's, you should mention it here. I find that a lot of professors are more likely to bring in students who are aiming for a grad school program because they know they're going to be doing research in the future and they know they need that for their grad applications. So if you're interested, put it there. Don't lie about it, just if you are, you can put it there and it may boost your chances of getting into that research lab. Now also, once you've drafted your email, make sure to read through their page again. Some professors will want you to send in certain information like transcripts or GPA with your email for applying to their lab, just so they can make sure you're in good academic standing. Any extra information that they have listed that you need to send in, now would be the time to put that kind of towards the bottom of your email and any other questions you have about the lab or things you think the professor needs to know should go there. Do a final check over your email, make sure there's no typos, maybe even have someone else read it for you, and then you can send all your emails in. Once your emails are sent in, give your professors time. Especially during the current world situation, it can be a lot longer of a time before professors can respond to research emails for undergrads because a lot of professors don't have things in place to bring in new undergrads during the current climate. That's because they can't risk their PhD students getting sick and they really need to continue their research. Although if some have undergraduate things in place or if they're willing to put them in place to bring in a new undergrad, you'll be lucky, but you just gotta give them time. And if they don't respond after a couple of weeks, you can send them a reminder email. But other than that, I try not to pester them. A lot of these professors are super busy and you don't wanna annoy them before before they even accept you into their lab. If you don't get a response or they say their lab is full, then you just gotta move on and look at other labs. But if they do say that they have room in their lab, then they're gonna probably ask you for an interview. Now, this interview tends to be a lot more casual. It's not like a super professional job interview. They just wanna to get to know you. They wanna know why you're interested in their lab. They wanna know your interests, your major, what kind of you wanna go into. And of course, this is the point where if you have any questions about their lab, ask away. There's so many questions you can ask about research that's not gonna be listed on their research pages online. And you can ask like what you would be doing specifically and all sorts of little things about the lab. After this interview, then they may offer you an official position in their lab as an undergraduate researcher, and that's fantastic. After that, you're going to have to go through some basic lab training and just get situated in the lab for maybe a week or two, and then you'll start being able to do undergraduate research. If they can't accept you, then it's time to go look at another lab and just keep trying. If you have an institution that has any decent amount of research, if you try, you'll get into a research lab. You don't have to worry. There's hundreds of them across the school and you can just keep trying till you finally get into a research lab that's a good fit for you. So good luck on your undergraduate research. Hopefully you'll get some papers published. And with that, you'll also get a great letter of recommendation from the professor you're doing research under because you're now gonna be working with them for years. And one other tidbit is as soon as possible, remember to get into research. Professors are also even more likely to accept you into research if you are maybe a freshman, sophomore, or junior because they want people to be doing research for longer in their lab. And if you're already a senior, you're only gonna be spending a year in their research lab and they're going through all that time to train you and it doesn't add a lot of value to their lab. So make sure to get into research as soon as possible. You can go back, follow this guide, and best of luck getting into a research lab. I hope this video is helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.